Chapter 4 introduces two variable statistics. In two variable statistics, each variable can have a sample size, mode, median, mean, and standard deviation. But in two variable statistics, our focus more often is on how the two variables are related. In this chapter, we'll look at statistics that measure how variables are related to each other and when one variable is correlated to another variable. Chapter 4 will start off with a, a look at what we mean by a relationship between two variables. We'll look at a relationship between time and distance for a moving object and continue on to look at some of the functions that we can do in Google Sheets to calculate some of the statistics that relate the two variables to each other. I'm going to roll a marble down a 15-foot distance, recording the time it passes three-foot intervals. Although I'll start rolling the marble at a distance of zero, I won't start my timer till I hit the three-foot mark. At three feet, I'll start my timer and record the times every three feet after that at 6 feet, 12 feet, and on down to 15 feet. And so I'll have time versus distance for the marble. You'll be able to see that marble roll down this distance in just a moment here. Here's the marble rolling. At 3, I start the timer. Those are lap times there. And then at the end, and the timer may run a little bit over at the end. So at three feet, I actually started the timer, and then those are six foot, 12, uh, and so on. The last time is not a real time. I, the number four is at 15 feet. The data I gathered from the marble roll can be seen here in my spreadsheet. I've put the time in column A and the distance in column B. And I'm going to go ahead and tap in A1 and tap on the plus sign tell it to make a chart. Google Sheets app will initially give me a column chart, but I'll change the type. Here I'll have to scroll down to scatter. When I tap on scatter, I can see that the points are actually going to line up rather nicely. I'll go ahead and remove the legend. The legend isn't necessary and for the titles on the horizontal axis that's the time for the marble to roll and on the left vertical axis that was the distance covered by the marble it was in feet that was the way the tiles were arranged and I did start timing from three feet uh, and on out and at this point, I pressed the check mark, and I can see I've inserted the graph. Now, from the app, there's really no further editing I can do of the chart. There's a lot more capability in the desktop version, but that capability is duplicated by functions, which will be covered in the next section. The goal today is to show you how to make a graph, and the point here is those dots lay along an imaginary line. And that's why we refer to these as linearly uh, related variables. You could draw a line through those points. The line might not go exactly through the points, and we'll cover that in a future section. But the points basically lie along a line. As the time increases, the distance increases. That rate of increase is constant, a fairly constant rate of increase. After four seconds, the marble has basically gone about twice as far as it had done after two seconds. You might note that I didn't start the timing at zero. I started the timing at three feet, which you can see there on the uh, y-axis. That will later be referred to as a, a y-intercept. And the rate of increase will be referred to as a slope. But this is how you can make a, a, a scatter graph chart. And the shape on that graph will tell us whether we have a relationship and whether or not that relationship is linear 
or possibly some kind of non-linear relationship. When putting your data in, the x-axis variable goes in the first column, column A, with a label at the top, and the y values always go in the second column, in column B. And then the graph will come out with the first column on the x-axis and the second column data values on the y-axis. One other thing to bear in mind here, there are the sample size here is only 5, not 10. There are 5 data pairs here. That data pair, time 0, distance 3 feet, that data pair is one data value. So each data value consists of the x value and the y value, the, the value in column A and the value in column B. I'll often tend to refer to them as x and y from the world of algebra. That's one data value. This is the second data value is here in row 2, as you can see here. And there's a third. So there's only five data values here. Five dots. That's another way to get the sample size. You can see it from the dots. So we'll be able to use the count function, but we'll have to be careful only to count the pairs. That is to count one column when we do decide to do that. So if I want to do the sample size, I'll, I can use the count function that we've learned to use uh, before. But I'm going to only count the, var the variables in one column here. Uh, not quite that far, right there. Press check, and the sample size is indeed 5. A sample size of 5 here. So the sample size is just a number of data pairs. And that's a bit of an introduction to making an X-ray scatter graph and determining the sample size for your paired data. In the next section, we'll look at functions to calculate the slope, that's the rate of increase, and the intercept, that's where the imaginary line would cut across that, what we call the y-axis, zero on the x-axis.